When I first came to Shivananda Ashram, uh, coming from the Yogananda Ashram, we had done about seven hours of work a day of karma yoga, and we meditated an average of four and a half hours a day, and then Sunday was silence and fasting. But when I got to the ashram, Swami Chidananda didn't give me any karma yoga for the first two years. And that was extremely difficult for me. And he would go on world tour, and after three or four months, he would come back, and I would say, Swamiji, I need to do karma yoga. Please give me some karma yoga. He say, yes, 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 I'm thinking about it. I'll get back with you. And then he would go on tour again and go all over the world and then come back again. And I would say the same thing. And this went on for two years. So finally, I decided I'm just going to volunteer in some department. I could type really well. So and in the computer department, they were typing Swami Shivananda's books into the, into the computer. So I volunteered there. And one time I missed the paragraph. And in any ashram, there's different types of people. And there was one person, a disciple of Swami Shivananda, who did not like Swami Chidananda. So he decided to make an issue of this. So then, Swami Chidananda called me down to his residence. And I waited for about an hour. Then finally he came out. And I said, Swamiji, I was only volunteering until you could make a decision. And he said, you know, people say that Swami Chidananda cannot make decisions. And they're absolutely right. And I was really shocked by this, you know. So he said, because I wait and I wait and wait until I know it's God's will and then I act. Whereas other people rush into situations and then later they have to backtrack because they found it was not the right, the right thing. It was not God's will. So that's one story. I can tell you another one. I was in uh, Kerala with Swamiji at Ananda Ashram, the ashram of Papa Ram Das, and some other people were uh, going to uh, Amma's ashram in Kerala, a close disciple of Swamiji, a German man, and I thought Swamiji would want me to go also. So I was asking him, should I go, you know, and I thought it's okay. And so he, we were walking to the satsang hall. He was going to give a satsang. And he said, I'll tell you when I come out of the satsang. So then he came out of the satsang and we're walking with everyone. The whole crowd is around us. And he says, at that night time, my name was Kevin. He said, you know, the problem with Kevin is he's so full of Kevin all day long. He's thinking about Kevin and how Kevin can be happy. And Swamiji went on for about 10 minutes walking with everyone because we're going to his room and we're all walking together. And I can't say a word. You know, when Swamiji's like that, I just keep quiet. And then we got to his door and I said, Swamiji, I just want to do whatever Swamiji thinks is best. And he said, Swamiji doesn't think. And then he says, but he thinks that you should go and have your food now. So that kind of teaching from Swamiji is some of the best teaching I ever had. When he really bears down on us, when the Guru really loves you, he will bear down on you and press you and even embarrass you in front of other people. He's said really terrible things about me in front of other people when he's really concerned, you know, because they feel that whatever it takes to wake you up is what they're going to do. And even if it hurts sometimes, and I think he's helped to wake me up quite a bit. <laughs>